control hazards. Control hazards are caused by control flow dependencies between the instructions. Usually programs never follow a sequential flow of execution always. If we consider any high level program, we can see there are if statement, while loops or for loops, function calls, subroutine calls and so on. And in the processor executed program, these kinds of non-sequential flow is controlled with the help of branching instructions. The branching instructions can be either unconditional or conditional. An unconditional branch instruction always make a branch or a jump to a target instruction without checking for any condition. And a conditional branch instruction check for a condition. If the condition is true, it make a branch or jump to the target instruction. Otherwise, it does not. So if we have a program or a set of instructions containing branch instruction because of these control flow dependencies between the instruction there is chance for some issue or hazard called control hazard. Suppose we have a program containing 10 instructions i1, i2 etc to i10 and assume i2 be an unconditional branch instruction whose target instruction is i7. We are executing this program using a four-stage pipeline processor. Also assume that the target instruction from I2 will be computed only after the execution stage of the pipeline. So in cycle 1, we fetch instruction I1. In cycle 2, we decode I1 and fetch I2. In cycle 3, we execute I1, decode I2 and fetch I3. In cycle 4, we write back I1, execute I2, decode I3 and fetch I4. Now, once the execution stage of I2 is over, it was realized that the next instruction to be executed is actually I7, not I3. But by that time, we have fetched and decoded I3. Also, we have fetched I4. Hence, all these operations have become a waste. We need to flush all these instructions out from the pipeline and should fill the pipeline with the instruction I7, which is possible only in the next cycle. As a result, in the next two cycles, we do not get any instruction processed out. And from each cycle onwards, one instruction is processed out in each cycle. So these operations have become a waste. We need to drain out these instructions from the pipeline. There is a wastage of two CPU cycle. And overall, the effective CPI, the effective clock per instruction increases. So overall, there is some loss or penalty due to this branching instruction. This is called branch penalty. So if we have a set of instruction containing branching instructions, then we will not be, it is not possible for us to overlap the instructions in a normal pipeline way, processing out one instruction in one cycle. This issue or hazard which is caused by the control flow dependencies between the instructions is called control hazard. So here we assumed I2 as an unconditional branch instruction. An unconditional branch instruction is always taken and hence there is always a branch penalty or wastage of CPU cycle and the effective CPI will increase. And here the target address is computed in stage 3 and hence this instruction is processed out with 3 cycles. And all the other instructions, remaining 5 instructions are processed out in one cycle. So if we have one branch instruction whose target is computed in stage 3, then there will be one instruction which is processed out with 3 cycle and all the remaining instructions processed out in one cycle. So if we neglect the time taken to fill the pipe, then on the number of cycles taken is 3 plus 5, 8. In other words, we can say 
all these six instructions take one cycle and because of this branch instruction whose target is computed in stage 3 one of these instruction take 3 minus 1 cycles extra or 2 cycles extra so all the six instructions take one cycle and one instruction take two cycles extra as a result the total number of cycles is 8 if we neglect the time to fill the pipe now suppose the target address is computed in stage 2 of the pipeline in cycle 1 we fetch instruction i1 in cycle 2 we decode i1 and fetch i2 in cycle 3 we execute i1 decode i2 and fetch i3 now once decoding i2 is over it is realized that the next instruction to be executed is actually i7 not i3 by that time we have already fetched i3 so these operations have become a waste we need to flush i3 out from the pipeline and should fill the pipe with the instruction i7 in the next cycle as a result in the sixth cycle we do not get any instruction processed out then from 7 cycle onwards, we get one instruction process route in one cycle. So here we can see we have one branch instruction whose target address is computed in the stage 2 of the pipeline. Then we have one instruction which is processed out in two cycles and all the remaining instructions processed out in one cycle each. So one instruction is processed out in two cycles. The remaining five instructions processed out in one cycle each total seven cycles. In other words, we can say all the six instructions take one cycle and because of the one branch instruction whose target is computed in stage two, one of these instructions take one cycle extra. So one of these instruction take two minus one cycle or one cycle extra as a result total seven cycles where we neglect the time to fill the pipeline. If the time to fill the pipeline is also considered, then it is 7 plus 3, 10 cycles. Hence, if the target is computed in stage 2 of the pipeline, there is a wastage of 1 cycle. If the target is computed in stage 3, then there is a wastage of 2 cycles. If the target is computed in stage 4, then there is a wastage of 3 cycles. So suppose we have 100 instructions out of which 20 are branching instructions and other are non-branching instructions. Let all the branching instructions are unconditional where the branch is taken and here the branch target is computed in the execution stage in the third stage of the pipeline. Now what is the effective CPI if we neglect the time to fill the pipe? Here the branch target is computed in stage 3 hence there will be 20 instructions which are processed out in 3 cycles and remaining 80 instructions processed out in 1 cycle. So once the pipe is filled the total number of cycles is 140 for 100 instructions. In other words, we can say all the 100 instructions take one cycle and because of these 20 branch instructions, there are 20 instructions taking two cycles extra, 3 minus 1 cycles or 2 cycles extra. Hence, it is 100 plus 20 into 2, 140 for 100 instruction. So, for one instruction, the effective CPI is 1.4. Now suppose there are 100 instructions out of which 20 are unconditional branches, 80 are non-branching instructions. Suppose the branch target is computed in stage 2 of the pipeline. Now, so there are 20 branch instructions whose branch target is computed in stage 2. Hence, there will be 20 instructions processed out with 2 cycle and all the remaining instructions processed out in 1 cycle each. So 40 plus 80, 120. Otherwise, we can say all the 100 instructions take 1 cycle each and just 20 instructions take 1 cycle extra. So 100 plus 20, 120 for 100 instructions. Then the effective CPI for one instruction is 1.2. So if the branch target is computed in stage 2, 
Then the extra cycle taken is 1. If the brand target is computed in stage 3, the extra cycle is taken is 2. If the brand target is computed in stage 4, the extra cycle is taken will be 3 and so on. So we can see if we can decide the branch target as early as possible in the pipeline then the number of cycles wasted can be decreased also the effective CPI can be kept closer to 1 and the overall branch penalty will be less.